Hey everyone, what's going on? It's your host, the one and only, and today we'll take a closer look at a quick unboxing and review of Google's latest budget smartphone, the Google Pixel 7a. Now, of course, the Pixel 7 line offers those premium features and are, in fact, the flagships. But damn it, the Google Pixel 7a really makes a statement and makes it a terrific contender within the budget smartphone realm. Google only made a few refinements here. However, there are welcome changes that do, in fact, make a big difference. The only downside is that now this phone is slightly more expensive. Inflation seems to be hitting every facet of our lives, and now budget phones have more and more competition to pack in as many features as possible while keeping the price down as low as possible to compete in such a crowded space and all while trying to make a profit with the increased price of some of these components. We got a lot to cover, so without further ado, let's get started with a quick unboxing. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Google's unboxings, especially on their A-series devices, haven't changed much over the years. We still feature our typical white box, and on the front, we see the Google G alongside Pixel 7a branding and an image of the back of our device front and center. As you can see, we picked up our review model in charcoal, but there are three other color options we'll go over in just a second. On the right-hand side, we have Pixel 7a branding. On the left hand side, it says Google, top has the Google G, and on the bottom is our serial number information. On the back, we have the hashtag Team Pixel alongside the contents of our box. We do have two pull tabs on either side of the box, so let's rip those off, open the lid, and the first thing we are presented with is the back of our shiny, brand new Google Pixel 7a. Probably the cleanest it will ever look. We'll set that off to the side as we dig deeper into the contents of our box. We see we have a grayed out Google G at the top, and this is basically a small tiny envelope that houses a SIM ejection tool, as well as the warranty information and a link for troubleshooting. Not even a quick start guide anymore. Now they just give us links. Pretty generic stuff. At the bottom is our USB-C to USB-C cable to charge and sync our device, along with a quick switch adapter. Noticeably absent is a power adapter, which is kind of common in 2023 at this point, but it is sold separately if you don't have one already. This is something to keep in mind. But now, coming back to the star of the show. Simply remove the film protecting the front display, press the power button on for a few seconds, and voila, there you have it. The handset will commence momentarily so that you may begin with the setup process. So all right, first, we need to go over pricing and availability. So the Google Pixel 7a is priced at $499 and shows an increase in cost from its predecessor, sadly. Google aims to offset this $50 price hike by incorporating premium features into the Pixel 7a. Meanwhile, the Pixel 7, its older cousin, priced $100 higher, doesn't appear to provide substantial additional value compared to the Pixel 7a at this moment. Furthermore, the Pixel 7 boasts faster charging, reverse charging support, and more premium materials. But it really is unclear if these features justify the higher price tag. As the Pixel 8's release approaches and is pretty imminent, the future of the Pixel 7 and its starting price of $599 remains unclear. If I had to bet money, they will most definitely increase the price, throw in a bit of new bells and whistles to entice us, and probably will have a starting price of $649. We'll see if my prediction is accurate. So now let's cover design, and the 7a embraces a familiar aesthetic. Google maintains the Pixel 7's design for the Pixel 7a. If you appreciate the distinctive look of recent Pixel handsets, this is excellent news. However, if you prefer more subdued smartphone designs, there are plenty of other options available within the Android space. Similar to the Pixel 7, the Pixel 7a boasts a solid colored back panel interrupted by a slender, horizontally oriented camera bar that some of us tech heads call a visor in a slightly darker shade. While the Pixel 7a's camera bar is narrower than that of the Pixel 6a, it still provides a balanced appearance when the phone is placed face up. Regarding color choices, you can opt for charcoal, which again is what we have here. You can also choose between snow or sea. 
Additionally, though, as a small little Easter egg, if you even want to call it that, Google's website offers an extra exclusive online coral orange option for the Pixel 7a, which I think looks pretty badass. While I think C looks great as well, I don't know, I'm kind of on a dark phone color kind of vibe as of lately, and this charcoal is not only dark, but it's sleek and mysterious at the same time. I love it, especially the visor and when it reflects sunlight while outdoors. One of the trade-offs for the Pixel 7a's affordability is the increased use of plastic in its back construction compared to the Pixel 7. However, the phone still incorporates an aluminum frame and overall feels good and pristine in the hands. It does not feel cheap by any means. While the Pixel 7a maintains a certain level of durability, it doesn't quite match the standard set by the mighty Pixel 7. The Pixel 7a offers an IP67 water resistant rating capable of withstanding submersion in up to one meter of water for 30 minutes, whereas the Pixel 7's IP68 rating allows for slightly deeper water resistance. I believe it's up to two meters, so double that for up to 30 minutes. Additionally, while the Pixel 7a lacks the more robust Gorilla Glass Victus found on the Pixel 7, it still utilizes Gorilla Glass 3 for scratch protection. And if you're wondering, yeah, you should probably rock a case for it in the event of a drop, seeing as how the Gorilla Glass 3 of the Pixel 7a is more susceptible to glass shattering when dropped from reasonable and occasional heights. The Pixel 7a features an under-display fingerprint sensor, though, which unfortunately exhibits similar hit and miss performance to the Pixel 6a's fingerprint reader. It's, it's just honestly kind of sluggish at times, to put it bluntly. To ensure reliable unlocking, it's recommended to linger your finger on the sensor for a second to a second and a half. Alternatively, you can take advantage of the face unlock capability recently added to the Google Pixel A phones, which is something that's nice to have on a budget phone. Some options, like the iPhone SE, only have Touch ID, so it's nice to have two different options. And now looking at the display, and while phone manufacturers have embraced faster display refresh rates as a differentiating factor over the years, Google has been very selective in implementing this feature across its devices. Historically, only Pixel flagships boasted a high refresh rate. I'm talking 120 hertz for the Pro model and 90 hertz for the standard Pixel. While the Pixel A devices did not get to enjoy this luxury. But thing is, Google is now changing course and as of now, the Pixel 7a has been upgraded, which is fantastic to see, and it's one of the reasons Google gives for the price hike. The Pixel 7a has now joined the ranks of phones with a fast refresh rate, as it can scale up to 90 hertz, mirroring the Pixel 7. This enhancement enables smoother scrolling and more immersive graphics in games that support higher refresh rates, such as my favorite, Pokemon Go, and yes, I know it's on the decline, the remote raid nerf sucks. While the move to 90Hz is undoubtedly a welcoming addition, the Pixel 7a still falls short compared to Samsung's mid-range phones. For instance, the Galaxy A54 that I recently just reviewed supports a superior 120Hz adaptive refresh rate, surpassing both the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7a. Similar to its predecessor, the Pixel 7a features a 6.1-inch display, slightly smaller than the 6.3-inch screen of the bigger Pixel 7. Notably, the bezels, especially on the sides and at the bottom of the phone, are kind of big, not gonna lie. While beating some noobs on Clash Royale, I couldn't help but feel that the on-screen mayhem was somewhat boxed in due to the bezels. But I guess with it being a budget phone, we can't hate on it all too much. On the bright side, pun intended, the Pixel 7a delivers excellent screen brightness. Google claims this phone can reach up to 1000 nits of brightness at its maximum setting, while pumping out HDR content, so you'll have no trouble using the Pixel 7a outdoors. Although, on exceptionally sunny days, I recommend disabling the Pixel's adaptive brightness setting to avoid glare and increase the visibility. So now let's go over cameras, which is usually high up on people's list to consider while shopping for a brand new handset. Google Pixel's A phones have always garnered attention for their impressive mobile photography capabilities that rival some DSLRs. What other sub $500 phone can capture shots like the Pixel phones? And if you've examined previous models, it's difficult to argue otherwise. But past Pixel A devices have heavily relied on Google's AI-powered photo processing to secure their position amongst the top camera phones, while the actual camera hardware has been pretty lukewarm. 
This is all changing with the introduction of the Pixel 7a, which ditches the 12.2 megapixel main sensor in favor of a great 64 megapixel shooter. This higher resolution surpasses even the main camera of the Pixel 7, like what? That's like the iPhone SE having a better main shooter than the iPhone 14. Notably, this upgrade arrives at a time when the Galaxy A54 has also bolstered its camera capabilities, featuring a 50 megapixel main lens of its own, indicating that competition is starting to heat up within this space. Undoubtedly, the pressure is mounting on Google to elevate its game with the Pixel 7a. Check out these photographs for yourself. You don't have the fancy hardware of the Pixel 7 Pro, but for most users, the main shooter will do wonders and it comes with all of the same software camera refinement features as its more expensive distant cousins. The Google Pixel 7a is also equipped with the same Tensor G2 chipset as Google's flagship Pixel 7 models, accompanied by 8 gigs of RAM to ensure smooth operation. Given that both the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7a share the same 8 gigabyte RAM capacity, it's no surprise that Google's budget-friendly phone delivers comparable benchmark results to its flagship counterpart. According to Geekbench 6, the Pixel 7a achieves average single-core and multi-core scores of 1422 and 3506 respectively. These scores do surpass those of the Samsung Galaxy A54, which is powered by an Exynos 1380 chipset, by the way. However, the iPhone SE, powered by the A15 Bionic processor, remains as the benchmark for low-cost phones with a multi-core score of well over 4300, establishing itself as the king amongst the budget phones in terms of raw benchmarks. But raw benchmarks and real-world usage are two very different things, and the Pixel 7a has more than enough horsepower under the hood to ensure a reliable and smooth experience while handling your everyday tasks. During my testing, I found that the Pixel 7a handled various apps with ease, including multitasking while playing some Pokemon Go. However, I did notice that the camera bar area on the back of the Pixel 7a became noticeably warm during extended gaming sessions, especially while using the AR feature. And by the way, the phone's singular speaker located at the bottom edge is very susceptible to being muffled when held in landscape mode. Gamers seeking optimal performance should consider a dedicated gaming phone. But for everyday tasks, the newer Tensor chip in the Pixel 7a is more than adequate. The Pixel 7a is available in a single 128 gigabyte storage configuration, which is pretty typical for budget devices. In contrast, phones like the Galaxy A54 offer the flexibility of expanding storage capacity with a micro SD card. With the Pixel 7a, users are limited to the storage provided by Google. The extended battery life of the Pixel 7a cannot be solely credited to its battery size. For anyone who saw my Google battery drain test with the Pixel 6a, you know that the A-series Google phones perform quite well over extended periods of time. Google indicates that the Pixel 7a houses a 4385 mAh battery, slightly smaller than the Pixel 6a's 4410 mAh cell. But it seems that Google has integrated advanced power management capabilities within its Tensor chipset, or they implemented other techniques to optimize the phone's overall battery performance. And at least for me, the phone gives me just enough juice to last me the entire day, hovering at around 20% by the end of the day when I'm getting ready for bed. And finally, let's look into the pivotal software and special features of the Pixel 7a, anchored by the powerful Tensor G2 chip. This chip assumes paramount importance as it empowers a multitude of software functionalities that are unique to Google's ecosystem, all thanks to the incorporation of the Tensor Processing Unit and its machine learning capabilities. With the Tensor G2 at its core, the Pixel 7a seamlessly matches the capabilities of its counterparts, the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. This includes the inclusion, but not limited to, advanced photo editing features such as Magic Eraser, enabling effortless removal of unwanted objects from your images. It's what Google highly advertises in a lot of their commercials. And Photo Umbler, leveraging AI algorithms to enhance the sharpness of blurry faces. Most importantly, these remarkable features can be applied not only to photos captured by the Pixel 7a, but also to images taken by other devices. Plus, Google has been known for years for its eerily good speech-to-text feature that gets literally everything you say with pinpoint accuracy. I'd say it gets about 97% of what I'm saying every time correctly. 
and I would argue 97% is very good. Especially since Apple's speech to text alongside with Siri just flat out isn't as terrific. Occasionally adding unintended verbiage or sometimes getting the words flat out wrong. Siri, step up your game. So what's the verdict? The Google Pixel 7a boasts a multitude of appealing qualities for just about any casual user. Ranging from the advanced Tensor G2 chipset and its accompanying features to notable enhancements in display brightness and refresh rate. The device impresses with its commendable battery performance, but to squeeze the most battery out of this phone, I'd recommend tuning down the refresh rate down to 60 Hz. Which kind of sucks seeing as how the 90 Hz is a new welcome addition to a budget phone that's under $500. So you really have to weigh out your options. Do you prefer longer battery life or do you like the smoother refresh rate of the new 7a? The increase in megapixel count is great, and some people would say that Google's colors are a little on the flatter, darker side. I say they look more true to life. And besides, with a plethora of photo editing apps, this isn't that big of an issue in my opinion. Just go in there and brighten them to your heart's content. In the past, models like the Pixel 6a easily outperform mid-range alternatives such as Samsung's older Galaxy A53. However, when comparing the Pixel 7a's output to that of the Galaxy A54, the distinction becomes harder to determine. In light of these improvements, the Pixel 7 now seems obsolete, and I mean, it basically is, despite potential deals on the older device. The Pixel 7a is capable of almost everything that the Pixel 7 offers, all at a $100 lower price point. Whenever the Pixel 8 does drop, this will for sure change things, but unless you specifically require the Pixel 7 Pro's telephoto lens, the Pixel 7a stands as the superior and obvious choice among Google devices and especially for the users that are on a budget. Is it the best sub $500 phone though? That's a real tough one, given the Galaxy A54's 120Hz refresh rate and significantly improved cameras. Also, there's the fluidity and reliability of Apple's iPhone SE. Nevertheless, the Pixel 7a's unique tensor-powered features make it a distinct device that remains an excellent value proposition, even with its slightly higher price compared to last year's model. But guys, let me know what you think. Over the years, I've become a bigger fan of Google's handsets. I love all the software features and their cameras are impeccable, at least in my opinion. If you've owned a Google device before in the past, definitely drop your comments down below. And with that, guys, I'm clocking out for now. Do not forget to stay hydrated, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.